Welcome to a new CRT series, Meet the Monitor, a series where we'll be getting to know our monitors and wildlife experts that bit better. First up, we have our Head of Wildlife Monitoring, Dr. Vince Lee. So, hello, today I'm here with Dr. Vince Lee, our Head of Wildlife Monitoring at the CRT. Um, Vince, if you'd like to tell us a bit about yourself. Thanks, Archie, yeah. Um... So I have come into conservation as a volunteer and hobbyist for many years and have finally become a paid, I suppose, professional uh, in the, my sort of later years um, since I started working for the CRT and lots of other organisations. Um, I've just had a lifelong interest in all things biological really, so from the molecular to the population, so um, my first sort of career was in plant genetics, looking at DNA and uh, uh, physiological traits of plants and trying to improve crops through that work and looking at viruses and sort of fishing sequences of virus genomes and things like that, sort of the tiniest things and I'm now doing what I used to do at weekends for fun mm. as, a, as a job, which is uh, basically looking at wildlife and helping to conserve it. What's your favourite animal species that you've come across on CRT land? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I have a soft spot for snipe. It's, yeah. a, it's a bird that I really love. Um, the, the main, I mean, they're, they're quite an extraordinarily designed way. They, you know, normally you get the wading birds that have long legs and long beaks, or short legs and short beaks. These have got short legs and long beaks, so it's, mm. they're designed for walking around on solid ground, but putting their bill down deep mm. into, into the earth to get worms. So they look odd and their, their camouflage is brilliant, but when you look at it closely, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But, but the thing that I love most about them is the spring display flight that they do on their breeding grounds, which, which sadly we've not had here at all. They, they, they come here in the winter every year um, and uh, find plenty of worms in our fields, yeah. but um, just not quite wet enough and wormy enough yeah. for them to stay and breed, which they used to breed in, in, in the river valleys in Cambridgeshire. Um, and we still have a huge population in some of the bigger nature reserves, well, not a huge, several hundred in Cambridgeshire, but, uh, and, and going to see those singing in the spring is fantastic, because they, yeah. they do this amazing flight, they fly really high, mm. and then just plummet to earth and stick their tail feathers out, and the tails have this little twist on them, which makes them vibrate, so they yeah. make this sound like a kazoo, sort of, as the mm. uh, whistles past their tails, and, and um, the first time I heard that, I was camping in a, in a sort of bit of Shetland up in the mm. north of Scotland, and uh, heard this thing outside the tent. What's that? Mm. <laughs> so, and yeah, I've just loved them ever since. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, having a favourite is not easy because yeah. it, it's like having your favourite child yeah. it doesn't really compute. But yeah, I do like snipe. <laughs> what would you really like to see uh, while monitoring, but haven't yet? Mm. Well, I'm. Uh, my sort of thing really is the ecosystem processes and, yeah. and, and, and how everything works together and there are certainly some big missing elements. Mm. Um, the one I'm sort of, I think is most likely to eventually turn up that would be really fabulous is the beaver. I think yes. that's fantastic. Yeah. They're starting to uh, either be released or escape into the, into the English countryside now and um, well, hopefully won't be too long before they're back, but hopefully I'll live mm. to see that. Um, uh, Lynx would be even better, mm. but I think we're a bit further away from that. Um, those kind of things that actually have an element of, not only are they fabulous animals to see, but they're actually doing something that's that's, that's clearly missing from our landscape, so mm. our rivers don't flow and, and uh, um, work properly because they're, they've been engineered by humans and they should be engineered by beavers. Yeah. Our woods sort of impoverished by the, the amount of deer that are stalking, uh, working through there, eating everything that grows and really mm. something big and ferocious that's going to mm. put them to yeah. <laughs> right, is, is what we need in that concept. Um, I think the, 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 probably the most likely sort of rewilded element that will turn up here before any of those is the white-tailed eagle, just because yeah. they have such big powers of dispersal. Mm. I know from satellite tagging that some have flown over our farm, but I mm. haven't seen that yet, so that's yeah. so more likely to hopefully one spring morning see one of those go yeah. out, which would be amazing, and then mm. potentially could um, take the occasional deer as well, yeah. <laughs> that would be quite nice. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, 
Is there a UK species that you'd love to see in the wild? Mm, I mean, I've seen quite a lot of them already, yeah. um, but there's still a few, I'm sure. Um, I don't know those would be on that, on that. I have actually seen beavers in the wild, so I've seen the Scottish lynx mm. so I can't say that. Uh, but I've not seen a lynx yet or a wolf, which obviously don't mm. exist in the wild, and uh, it would be lovely to have those. Um, but things that actually... <laughs> What's the hit list? I mean, that there are, you know, um, from a sort of birding point of view, you yeah. know, that you kind of go out and you, you want to see a rare bird and sort of finding something that's not been seen before, so it's quite nice. But you know, some of the sort of wind-blown waves and strays like American warblers would mm. be fun. You know, that'd be that'd be kind of like a, a bit of um, a cherry on the cake, I suppose. Mm. But, Whereas from a sort of uh, ecological point of view, they're irrelevant. They're just detritus mm. flown, <laughs> flown over. So, so ecologically, I think, um, uh, well, I mean, I have seen checkered skippers in the wild, but they're still in, Cam in, in Cambridge. In, they're not in Cambridge yet. Yeah. I'd like to see those come back to the county. Um, <clears throat> nationally, or Great Britain. Gosh, that's, that's tricky. Um, uh, yeah, I know you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, actually, I mean, the one thing that I was hoping to see when I was on um, uh, a trip I made last, a year before last now, um, to the Orkney Isles was uh, killer whales. Or, yes, or, or, yeah. Um, they, there's a few of those around the coast, mm. uh, especially the, the Northern Islands, and that yeah. would be they're superb. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. What animal species would you go to uh, go to see if you could go anywhere in the world? <laughs> on a carbon neutral tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's say it was just a yeah. transportation, yeah. instant trans transportation, you're there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, I mean, I, I have travelled a bit in the past, and, um, you know, I think uh, as the sort of fears of climate change have sort of risen, I've reduced that to sort mm. of where I can get to surface transport, um, so that's kind of held that. But, uh, yeah, if that was um, out of the question, I... Um, I mean, it might be a bit tricky at the moment, but I had a, a, a long-standing desire to see, um, well, the whole habitat really of the Kamchatka Peninsula on the sort of far east of, uh, of Russia. Mm. Um, and there is some amazing stuff over there. So something like the Stellar Sea, which is a massive mm. bird, or a tiny little um, spoon-billed sandpiper, mm. which is uh, highly threatened. And you know, but it would be if you're seeing no either of those two species, you're seeing a whole lot of other stuff as well yeah. in that area that's relatively unspoiled and vastly wild, and, and it's just yeah, yeah, something like that would be fabulous. But uh, uh, equally, I wouldn't mind being at the bottom of the, the Mariana Trench, seeing the weird sort of things down there. Yeah, <laughs> that would be kind of awesome as well to see yeah. that kind of a, a totally different um, ecosystem mm. that we've got that's based on the sort of upwellings of chemical mm. uh, sulfurous uh, sort of um, not money to say. Yeah. yeah. But they, they, that's so different to whatever we yeah. used to obviously uh, uh, from my point. Mm. <laughs> um, and then finally the big money question. What is your favourite kind of biscuit? <laughs> um mm, <well>. wow <laughs> Okay, so you uh, say jammy dodger. <laughs> It's not jammy dodger, definitely. Giant <laughs> chocolate or whatever it is. Um, I mean, chocolate changes are fantastic. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, exactly. It's fantastic speaking to you. Thank you for that was good. Yeah. giving us some stuff. Um, yeah, you'll see a lot more events around, I'm sure. Um, we have a lot of a lot of stuff coming up. Um, so, yeah. and save the water, Saving the Water Bowl, uh, 8th of Feb, 7 pm. Led by yeah, plug in. Dr. Vince. So I better write that talk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to uh, join the join the call mm -hmm. and learn more about the wonderful work that Vince and Emily do uh, to help save the water bowl. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.